How to build a Blackgate Sweet P5 inch gauge locomotive, part 4. Removing a very rusty steam chest from one of the cylinders and extracting the studs. Even though this cylinder doesn't appear to be very rusty, part of it is. The joint between the steam chest and the cylinder, and the steam chest cover and the steam chest, is extremely rusty, as are all the studs. Time, I think, for some WD-40. I never noticed, but on this can, if you look further down, it will spray in two directions, either through the pipe or directly, and I didn't know that until now. WD-40 stands for Water Displacement, version 40, and not only does it displace water, it's quite a good penetrating oil. This steam chest is so incredibly rusty, it's very tight on every one of the studs. I'm not just going to break it off roughly, I'm going to take my time and get it off in one piece without even damaging the studs. I start off with a screwdriver, but not just in one place, I move all the way around the edge all of the time. Because if I just tap the steam chest in one place, it will become crooked on the studs and make it even harder to remove. By working all the way around in rotation, Eventually the steam chest starts to loosen. I think it's time for a bit more WD-40. I don't need to use the hammer anymore, it's definitely looser than it was. I'm just using the screwdriver, once again all the way around, to just lever the part away from the port face. When doing jobs like this, you need plenty of patience, because if you rush the job you'll ruin it. Just take your time, and apply plenty of WD-40, and after a while, the steam chest will work its way up the studs. The steam chest at the other side is also rusty, but nowhere near as bad as this, and I'm a bit puzzled why the rust is only affecting the cylinders, because the rest of the engine is okay. Eventually, the steam chest parts company from the studs, which, as you can see, look very rusty. After putting the slide valve in a safe place, the next part of the job is to get rid of the old gasket because it is not worth using. You can see in this clip how easily it fragments, no good at all. A friend of mine has an automotive gasket company and he used to give me some of the offcuts periodically left over from the manufacturing process. These automotive gaskets are far better than the stuff I'm looking at here. What's the best way to extract 10 very small studs. It's top tip time. Thankfully, not all of the studs were tight, but some of them were, and for the tight ones, I used the lock nut method. First of all, I fit a nut onto the stud in question that is tight. I had to use a spanner to move the nut further down the stud, because I need to fit a lock nut on the top part. Here I'm fitting the lock nut and tightening it against the original nut that I've just fitted. Then all I have to do, using the nut below the top nut, is unspanner the entire assembly and the stud comes out quite easily. I needed to use this lock nut method on four of the studs, all the rest were quite loose. And although I hate to use a pair of pliers, it's the best method for this, very quick, very simple, and I don't need to apply much pressure to the studs, because they are all quite loose. In a very short time, every one of these rusty studs is removed from the cylinder without any damage whatsoever. You can see in this clip how bad the rust is. I'm a bit concerned about the condition of the port face. I'm starting the job by just scraping off the remains of the gasket material and all the obvious rust around the edge. The only part that I'm really concerned with is the port face where the valve slides up and down. And when I look at this area very closely, miraculously, it's okay. I will clean up this face eventually when I start the job for real, using my cast iron surface plate and some wet to dry sandpaper. For now I'm just scrubbing it with a piece of Scotch Brite, and really it's not coming up too bad, I was surprised. Time to take a look at the port face a bit closer. As you can see, there's a bit of an error with the milling cutter on the exhaust port. This is a very minimalistic error, and I really don't think it's going to be of any consequence 
once the engine's back together and in steam. Time, I think, for a bit of live audio. He's been in a four-jaw chuck, a big four-jaw chuck. Right. That's the centre, right? And he's spun it and he's spun it. Can you see it swirls? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, can you see how they go across there? Yeah. Well, that's good. Good. And his milling is a bit out, but that doesn't matter. That's going to make right. no difference. I'm pleased to say I haven't seen anything scary yet. At least, not since I divorced my second wife. The next thing to do is to remove the connecting rods and make sure that the quartering on the axles is OK. But that will be in the next episode. For the moment, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.